What's up guys, Chris here with another Fortnite the Apocalypse manga video. And today I'm going to be talking about Percival. More specifically, why Percival's power is hope. I've been to make a video on Percival for the longest time now, and I have to say, now I feel pretty confident in my personal thoughts on why Percival's power is in fact hope. Now this video is going to be a lot shorter than the Lancelot Theory video that I did about a month ago, which again, that video is doing amazingly and I'm very grateful for all of the support on that video. That was probably like the best Fortnite uh, video has ever done and I do want to make more Fortnite videos like that in the future, but for now, this video on Percival is that I've been wanting to get out for a long time. So I really hope that this video also does well. And also, also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos for more Fortnite's content. I'm also planning to do other types of manga related content other than Fortnite's, so look forward to that. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so back in chapter 4 of the Fortnite of the Apocalypse manga, Percival unlocked his magical power. And in chapter 5, we explore the various varieties of Percival's abilities, and throughout the story, the different applications it could have. It is essentially a combination of all different magical types and attributes, as it is stated to be a hero type magic. It can be a transformation magic, it can create magical golems, it can be de deconstruction. It could be enhancement. It has a wide variety of utility, thus making it a type of Swiss Army Knife ability, making Percival genuinely OP. But the pure OPness, I don't even know, I, that's not even a word. The pure OPness, <laughs> the pure OP nature of Percival's power is the fact that it's based around hope, but not his own hope, because Percival is always the optimistic, hopeful character. No, his power is derived from the hope of others. If we go all the way back in chapter 19, Percival was essentially killed by Ironside, and it seemed that he was dead, and he was dead. His life had ended. But in chapter 20 and 21, Percival was revived because of his magical power. Donnie had hope in Percival, and so the hope of all his friends fueled his magical power, restarting his heart and reviving him. Now, it could also be the fact that Percival is meant to be the Knight of Death in the Fortnite the Apocalypse, that is why he wasn't completely dead, but, you know, you, you gotta think about certain things. But Percival's power is meant to be hope, and it's shown in multiple times throughout the story, every time Percival has battled a major character, whether it be Ironside or the, the Dark Talismans, Percival's powers have given him immense strength. Not enough to overwhelm his opponents, but enough to stand a chance. And the more his friends give him hope, the more they have hope in Percival, Percival grows exponentially stronger, making him a very tough opponent to defeat, as well as making sure that Percival himself is not too OP, as it believe it is the type of hope that other characters have. Because even when all of his friends had hope in him, Percival was not able to defeat Ironside showing just how powerful Ironside was, as he is one of the top knights in Arthur's circle. As well as the Dark Talismans, he wasn't able to take down all four of them at once, so it shows just how limited his hope powers are. But why is it hope? The namesake of this video, why is Percival's power hope? Well, I think it comes into play with the main message of what Nakaba Suzuki is trying to do with the story. As we all know, the Knights of Camelot and Arthur himself want a world for humans and humans alone, and to eradicate and wipe out all of the other races in Britannia. The giants, the fairies, the goddesses, the demons, every other race they want to completely eradicate and leave a world for humans and humans alone. Now, I believe, and I believe this is kind of like a bit on the nose, but with Percival as the protagonist being a bit naive and new to the world, he's begun to forge friendships with multiple people from multiple races, the fairies and Dolores the giant, in Echo Gorge, as well as Nazien's. And the circus troupe basically right away, Hearsay Donnie, he befriended On right away. And the most impressive thing, he befriended an entire village of demons. Granted, these demons were essentially uh, outcasts from the demon clan, and they were a lot nicer and friendlier than a majority of the demons that have been shown in the Seven Deadly Sins story. But still, once he found out that they were demons, 
he did not care whatsoever. Hell, it helps the fact that he also has the demon language somehow. He knows how to speak the demon language. But Percival's goal in the story and role is to be that one singular guiding light of hope to unite all the races in mutual understanding. Which is why his power is hope, because when people have hope, it can give others immense strength. It's a huge trope in shonen in general, where people's hope, where people's hope and believing in the main character or in a certain person, it gives them strength. Everyone says that it's like, you know, power, friendship, BS, or plot armor. Percival literally has the power to get stronger from people's hope. So, Percival's role in the story is to be the hope that everyone in Britannia can live peacefully. Leonis is shown to be a kingdom where giants, fairies, and humans all coexist. Now, due to the thing with the demons during the Holy War, it'll probably take a long time for humans to, you know, forgive the demons. But still, Leonis and Benwick, as well as most likely King of the Ants' uh, own kingdom, are a huge step forward to the unification of all the different races. Camelot is opposed to that due to the distress and destruction from the Holy War. So in, in a sequel series like this, in a world that has these types of problems, it only makes sense for the main character of that story to be the person that unifies all the different races and be the one to help preach and spread unity on mutual understanding and friendship, the hope of the world. And so Percival's power is hope for the pure, simple reason that I just stated. Everyone needs hope. The world needs a guiding light of hope to help unify everyone in mutual understanding and get rid of all of the hatred and resentment from the last 16 years. Well, actually the last 3,000 years. Leonis Benwick, King of the Ants Kingdom, which is still uh, yet to be named, I'm just gonna call it Grey Fairy King's Forest, are huge steps in that direction. But nothing is complete as many characters primarily in the locations surrounding Camelot and Camelot itself are opposed to that. Arthur has changed drastically over the series as he also was very, very open to being friends with people from other races. Hell, even when he found out that Meliodas was a demon, he did not think any less of him, primarily because of Merlin, but now Arthur's mindset has changed. He's the complete opposite. And so who better to take on someone who's essentially given up the hope of coexistence of all different races than a character who has befriended all of the different races who have been given power from all their hope to survive and all of it being placed on him, which is why Percival's power is hope. Again, this whole big thing is just completely on the nose. But that's kind of the thing I like. Percival is meant to be the fish out of water, the naive little kid with hopes, dreams, and aspirations for grand adventure, who's very good at understanding people and is open to be friends with everyone around him. So it makes sense why his power would end up being hope itself. It's so to counteract and potentially even open up Arthur's eyes that coexistence is possible. It just takes the right person and the right mindset. Arthur's got the power of chaos under him, so with that said, it's highly possible that his mindset was warped over the years due to the immense power of chaos. But yeah, that's honestly my general thoughts on why Percival's power is hope. He's meant to unify all the different races under that whole single idea of unification and to help open up Arthur's eyes that he is wrong, that there is still hope for Britannia to be united through all the different races, through mutual understanding and friendship. His eternal everlasting kingdom doesn't have to be for humans and humans alone. It can include everyone else. And that's the message that I believe Nakua Suzuki is going to deliver through Percival with his power of hope. But what did you guys think? Do you agree with my take on Percival's power being hope? Do you also agree that this is also very on the nose if we keep thinking about it like this? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think it's just some random thing so Nakua Suzuki can justify Percival getting a random power up throughout the story? Leave your thoughts and opinions down below on what you think about this video and this topic itself. Do you think that Percival's powers are just OP for the sake of being OP and to get him out of these certain situations? Or do you think that it's meant to be just a flat out on the nose message for hope and potential equality for everyone else and mutual understanding and friendship? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really, really does help. I want to do more Fortnite's content in the future, other discussion videos, other theory videos. I might do videos on Tristan and Lancelot in the future, especially when Tristan comes out. 
Also, when eventually that new Seven Deadly Sins movie surrounding Tristan does come out, I will be covering it, even though it does not look good in the terms of the animation department. But yeah, if you want to support the channel more directly, go check out my Patreon and Comfy accounts. I got some really nice perks over on Patreon that I think you guys will enjoy if you support the channel through there. Also, if you want to support the channel through Coffee, then that is great too. I do want to make more larger videos like this in the future. I also got other videos planned, like the Magi review that I am still currently trying to make. Part one is currently out and available. I will link that in the title card above so you can take a look at it yourself. I am very proud of how it turned out. And the parts are going to be a little slow going at first, as I do want to keep doing Fortnite's content, which is the most popular content on the channel. But I do want to do more Magi reviews, as it, the series is completed, and I am very excited to read more. But yeah, with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, leave your thoughts and opinions down below, and I hope you all have an awesome day.